In this chapter, we're going to be talking about water and all the properties of it. It's a pretty simple molecule. It only has three atoms. We've already looked at the structure. It's just one oxygen and two hydrogens, but that simple molecule is the basis for life as we know it on this planet. So water is everywhere on the planet, and it's a natural resource. It's a precious resource because it's unevenly distributed on Earth. Uh, global access to clean water, which we'll talk about, is, is not equal for all countries and all continents. So the properties of water support life and all life, not just humans. And there are chemical properties about water, including the structure that I've already, that we've already looked at. But also there are changes, chemical changes in the water, um, such as acidity, which we'll talk about in this coming chapter, that change the viability for many organisms and ecosystems will change as we talk about this issue called ocean acidification that is directly linked to climate change and carbon emission. Providing global access to clean water, the grand challenge of the 21st century. As far as we now know, in order for there to be life, there must be water. How remarkable that this essential chemical compound has such a simple structure. It has only three atoms, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Our water supplies are vital for supporting life, but they can also change. For example, if ocean temperature and volume change, global water circulation patterns will change. Water sources can also be changed by contamination. The chemical changes in water, such as an increase in acidity, changes viability for many organisms. Both physical and chemical changes can alter the ecosystems of the ocean, as well as of the entire planet. Let's take a look at a demonstration that reveals how changing environments can alter livable conditions. Calcium and carbonate ions combine to form the shells of many ocean organisms. Eggshells have a similar composition. Each of these beakers has a liquid. The first is distilled water. The second is vinegar. And the third is highly concentrated hydrochloric acid. If I place a raw, uncracked egg into the beakers, watch what happens. The hydrochloric acid rather rapidly dissolved the shell. Vinegar, a weaker and much less concentrated acid, also dissolved the shell. The distilled water did not dissolve the shell within the time frame that we set. As the ocean becomes more acidified, the shells of crustaceans will begin to dissolve, and in this environment, cannot regenerate. In this chapter, we will describe water as a chemical and explain how its properties support life and are related to its chemical structure. Water is important to every living thing on Earth, and we all need water for life. The humans, the animals, the plants. So it's a very precious resource, and yet the humans have an outsized effect on it. So though the Earth is covered in water, which is including clouds in the atmosphere, this is seawater, and so this is um, not drinkable water. Uh, we need fresh water. So this is uh, living things need fresh water, usually in the form of rain or snow or um, underground aquifers. And so only about 0.01% is actually water that we can access that is available and that is clean water that we can drink. So there's a scarcity of fresh water for food, for agriculture, growing food, drinking water, and sanitation is also important. So fresh water can also easily become polluted water. So we'll talk about how water interacts with other chemicals. And um, this is something that is important to us as well, even though we have fresh water and access to water, water pollution is similar to air pollution in that it's a tragedy of the commons. It's a shared resource and no one individual is responsible for it and it can easily become spoiled. 
So we'll look at properties of water, specifically acids and bases, in uh, a couple of labs actually during this module. And the um, chemical, the chemistry behind water will help us understand the problem called ocean acidification. So we know we'll need more water in the future. And uh, water being a shared resource, we, everyone has to figure out how we're going to share this resource properly. One of the upcoming assignments is the water footprint, which has a lot of crossover with the carbon footprint you've already done. Water usage is more than just the water you drink and use every day. It includes all factors of your lifestyle. Your household water, which is both indoor water use and outdoor water use, say for watering the, the lawn. Um, but it's also virtual water. Virtual water, you can't see that you're using that, but it is needed for the stuff you buy, the food you eat, and the electricity, the energy that you use. So we've seen that in the coal-fired power plant, how much water is used in uh, moving in the system as well as in cooling off the system. So virtual water is hidden in the stuff we buy, the food we eat, particularly agriculture. So crops and livestock use lots of water um, to grow, but also in processing. So this week's discussion includes water consumption and water conservation, and you also have the assignment of your water footprint.